just meditating. It's meditating today because I wanted to see, wanted to see what would come through. I wanted to see what I wanted to speak about. And I thought once again, I'd go into my past and and I'd share some of my personal fears with you. I'd actually share my number one fear, which is kind of weird because my my number one fear was a collection of fears. So I'll explain in this video. I had one fear. I had one fear, and that fear was uh, an accumulation of many other fears. But they were all just disguises to come back to one fear. And my fear was, <laughs> I was afraid of love. It just came to me right now. I just meditating, and it came came to me. I was, I was afraid of love. <laughs> I was afraid of love because. <laughs> I thought love was a <laughs> I thought love wasn't manly. I thought <laughs> I thought if I was to love myself and have love in my life, people <laughs> people would bully me. I thought men would take advantage of me. I thought my family would take advantage of me. I thought you would take advantage of me. I've never met you before. I was frightened to love myself. And I know why I've got the answer. I'll tell you. I was frightened to love myself because I've got an early recollection of an abusive, um, of my dad being abusive to me in a situation that actually, actually damaged me and broke me, broke me down. And I've still got the story, I'll share it with you. Once upon a time when I was younger, I can't exactly, rec I can't, I can't remember the, the age I was at. But I remember where I was sitting. I was sitting in the sitting room in my house. My dad was sitting opposite me on the other settee. And my mum was in the kitchen. So obviously the kitchen and the settee are together. So my mum was, I think my mum was washing up or cooking something and my dad was just sitting down quiet. But as my mum was cooking, she was talking to me. And I was talking back to, you know, outside the room, but the rooms were closed. And then my mum, <laughs> because we used to laugh and joke a lot. She came out into, into the passage. She leant out and I was conversing and laughing, but, and then my dad looked over at me and he was angry, I could see it in his eyes. He was hateful. And I don't know how I knew this when I was younger because I was only about 13, maybe even younger. I can't remember, about 13. But I knew that he got jealous. I knew that his anger come from jealousy. He was, he was threatened by my relationship with my mum. It was an insecurity that he had, obviously from his own fears. So he looked at me and he said to me, he did this face, the exact expression, and he went, don't talk stupid. He said, don't talk stupid. And, and there was another situation where he said to me, you sound like a cunt. I'm sorry to use graphic language. So when he said that to me in that moment, it destroyed me and it, and it communicated that if I'm loving and affectionate towards a person, especially my mum, that means I'm stupid and I'm weak, I'm not a man. So he terrified me in that moment. He terrified me and what came up from that feeling, I felt dirty, I felt disgusting, I felt unlovable and I hated myself in that moment. I hated him. And of course, that's what contributed to my social anxiety. And then I lost trust in that moment. I lost trust of who I was. I couldn't speak. So after that, I couldn't speak how I speak now. I couldn't speak how I speak now of a beautiful aligned voice, a voice of honesty, of integrity. I, I couldn't speak around him. And that translated into all of my social relationships and it became heavily ingrained in my psychology that love is weak, it's not being a man. So I was, I was frightened of love. So I was frightened of myself. I was, I was frightened of myself because I immediately lost connection with love, which is everything. If a man hasn't got love, or if a woman hasn't got love, you've, you're, you're in darkness, you haven't got anything. So that's where I lost, I lost my faith in God. I immediately lost trust in God because I thought, I just thought God doesn't love me and my dad doesn't love me. And I was confused because I realized that 
see how much confusion it was, it's even hard to explain it. I was frightened of losing my dad's love over the love of myself, the love from my mother, the love from God and the love from people. Because before that happened, I loved people. I didn't have social anxiety. I remember when I was a kid. I wasn't hateful. I wasn't prejudiced. I wasn't angry. Uh, of course, we all experience these things because it's part of the human condition, but I wasn't in these places and I wasn't, I wasn't cemented in this identity of hate, jealousy or, or distrust towards people. So in that moment, I didn't trust my dad anymore. I didn't trust my dad, it I didn't trust my mum, I didn't trust my family, I didn't trust anyone, no one at all. I didn't trust God, I didn't trust people. It didn't matter what background, what colour people were, I didn't trust anyone. And I, the worst part was, didn't trust me. So it damaged me, left me confused. So when I went outside, it explains it why I always got bullied, because people could sense it. That's why I became violent and wanted my dad's approval, because I felt to be violent and to make other people frightened, that's how you get love. That's the wrong way, that's not the right, that's not the right love. And that explains why I could never trust men, and men always started on me, they always picked on me. Because I was projecting hate, I was projecting, I was projecting distrust, and people could see it in my eyes. And I'll share my next fear of you that's lined up. My next fear was being caught out. My biggest absolute fear that I didn't want, didn't want any, I didn't want you guys to know. I didn't want my family to know. I didn't want anyone to know. My fear was being caught out. And I used to say to myself, well, what could I be caught out for? What could people catch me out for? What could I possibly be caught out for? All my insidious acts of low self-esteem. What could, being caught out that I paid prostitutes for sex? Is that what they're gonna catch me out for? Uh, being caught out that I absolutely pulverized people with my hands. Men, I, I hurt men. I knocked men out in, in clubs, I, I broke a guy's nose, it, I hurt so many people, so many men, to protect myself from thinking I'm not a man, thinking I'm soft. But it wasn't that. Or was I afraid that people would catch me out because they would see deep down I'm damaged, I don't love myself, and I hate people at that time. But it went even deeper than that. It went much deeper, because I had voices in my head. Because when you get traumatized, I know this on a fundamental level. I, don't, I didn't read it, didn't go on Google, but I know it for a fact from my own experience. When someone traumatizes you, it damages you, and it opens up demons. It invites demons in. Which, let me just, when I say demons, a metaphor for anxiety. If you go into Christianity and look into the Bible, and you look at people that suffered anxiety, they would say that, he was suffering from demons and, and Jesus Jesus's job was he was a healer he healed demon of he healed people of their demons he exercised their demons out by aligning them back to love he aligned them back to truth so I was out of alignment and I was being controlled and bullied all my life by demons my dad had passed his demons onto me and then I went out into the world, I passed my other demons on to people, which was hate and anger and anxiety, social anxiety. Then they passed their demons on to me. So I didn't want people to see who I really was, because I was damaged, I was very vulnerable. So I was worried that people would catch me out and see who I am. And the voice would say, they're going to say, you're weak. Other men are going to say, you're a weak man, look at you, you're pathetic. You're weak. And then what frightened me mostly, wasn't frightened of my dad. I was not frightened of my dad deep down. I thought I was, and I wasn't frightened of people, and I wasn't frightened of violent man. How could I be frightened of violent man? I was a violent man. I only had to go in the mirror and look at a violent man. I couldn't, well, I used to be frightened. I thought, I thought everyone was gonna cheat me. So that's how, I know how you feel. Because I couldn't trust my friends growing up. I thought my friends would cheat me. I thought if I bring my girlfriend in the room, even though I didn't have a girlfriend at the time, metaphorically speaking, they're going to cheat me and my girlfriend's going to cheat me as well. Because I'm, I'm not worth anything. A woman's not going to want to stay with a man like me. 
because I'm damaged and my friends are not going to respect me so they're going to cheat me so in order for me to stop that from happening I'm going to be violent I'm going to scare them I'm going to intimidate men because that's what my dad done to me he intimidated me and interestingly growing up I idolized my dad I loved the guy I idolized him I watched every movie made I, wa I watched the way people reacted around him people were frightened of him but they they liked him because he had a good side to him but he was out of alignment with who he was so I loved the true self that was my dad that represented who I was because I'm his son of course but I couldn't trust him because I didn't know when he was going to change and it affected me so I couldn't trust myself so I loved the guy that was nice and honest and sincere wasn't hateful, wasn't racist, wasn't violent, wasn't jealous, wasn't paranoid I really liked that guy but I couldn't trust that guy long enough to stay and be that person which is why I had social anxiety which was well, slipping in and out of alignment because sometimes I'd feel really good around people I'd feel safe, I'd feel that feeling of love and connection but then I'd get the voices come in and they'd say to me They'd keep threatening me and then it would pull me out of alignment then I'd feel this rage and anger I wanted to kill people I wanted to kill men can you believe that? that's how I used to live I wanted to kill men with my hands I wanted to smash them to pieces sorry my language because I just see my dad in lots of different men I wanted to kill them because being around people made me embarrassed made me ashamed it made me feel I felt judged and one of, another one of my biggest fears was you know, when well, knowing you're frightened that people can see that you're damaged, you don't want them to see it. You don't want them to see that you've got social anxiety. You try and hide it. And I knew deep, I knew deep down on a deep level that people can see it. They can read it. Even if, even if they can't see it, unconsciously they can feel that you're, you're scared. Because I was scared. That's why bullies bully because they're scared. So that's why I got into so many fights. I couldn't deal with this feeling of love. That's why, that's why I cheated on women in my old identity. So I couldn't handle that feeling of being cheated. Because I felt cheated by my dad. I felt, I felt cheated by life. Didn't trust anyone unconsciously. So I was, I was in a, a catch-22. I was in a place of violence. And I was in a place of, um, sorry, in a place of violence, in a place of love. That's why growing up I had a lot of intimacy problems around having sex in the bedroom. I, it was a struggle for me. A lot of people watch my old videos and they see this cocky, arrogant, <laughs> this, this cocky, arrogant guy. And they thought he was confident, but I wasn't confident. I was hiding this guy. But I love that guy as well, because that guy was trying. And in the Bible, uh, God said, he loves a trier. So for many years, my dad had stolen that from me. He'd stolen who I am, myself. Or at least I believe that. So how did, I, how, did I, how did I overcome this? How did I get my connection back with God? How did I get connection back with myself? How did I... I'll tell you something else as well. How did I get the confidence to be non-violent? That's what I always wanted deep down. And I know that's what you want. I wanted the confidence to not be violent to people. I wanted to sit in a room full of people and feel safe. Didn't want people to feel sorry for me. Didn't want people to... I didn't need self-pity. Self-pity is not who I am. That's not who I am in God. I didn't need people to feel sorry for me. Didn't need any of that. That, that for me, that, was, that actually made me feel violent. I was very sensitive when I was younger. Very sensitive guy. I could sense if people were not honest, I could sense if they were sincere, I could sense if they were trying to trick me. I was incredibly socially intuitive, I was just socially afraid. And I know you're the same, we're all like that, we're not stupid. So as I got older and I started to get more experience through violence and violent men, because I was violent, my dad was a violent man, I was violent, all my friends were violent. I'll tell you what my violence was, I want to get this out, it makes me feel better. My violence was taking cocaine. My violence was selling cannabis in my old identity. My violence was pulverizing people, battering people, knocking people out, knocking them to the floor, breaking their noses, um, hitting people. I hit people, I hit people with hammers, I, I hurt people, I put people in the hospital. I did these things in my past. 
because I thought I wasn't good enough and I thought I had to be a man, I had to hurt people, I had to hurt people to get respect from other men. I did all these things. I did horrible things to people, I was a nasty bully because I'd been bullied, I'd been treated like this by my father, I'd been bullied by other men. I was pissed on, I had my money stolen, I was bullied in school, I was bullied outside school, I was bullied, I was bullied all the time, bullied by my family. I was bullied socially, I was a people pleaser, but I was violent as well. So violence was destroying my life. And because I couldn't deal with this, I couldn't handle this truth, couldn't take it. Didn't matter that people thought, because people thought I was confident. And that's what kept this horrific game going, because they think you're confident, but you're not confident on the inside. So eventually, you know what, violence attracted me, and I'll tell you the gospel on this truth. I've told you the truth anyway, I always told the truth. Well, actually, that's not entirely true because I'm human. I make mistakes. Sometimes we do tell white lies. But I'm getting better at telling the truth and I am a very honest person now, thank God. Getting better at it and teaching it. So, this is what the violence attracted. This is what a violence attracted in my life. This is over a, a 20 year period. Let's just say 10 years because 20 is a bit of an exaggeration, but it probably is 20. So, violence attracted violent people. It attracted drugs, it attracted me hurting people, putting a few people in the hospital. People put me in the hospital when I was a kid and I was younger. This guy smashed my head through a window and he killed me. I'd split my head open and put me in the hospital. It attracted dysfunctional relationships. I had sex with lots of women but I didn't trust any of them. I love. I wanted to love them, I loved them a little bit. But as soon as I felt that feeling of love too much, it brought those feelings out of my dad. I felt dirty, I felt disgusting. I thought, I've got to pull out of this, I don't trust it. So I resorted back out of alignment into this nasty, vindictive bully. And I attracted these relationships, because we, of course, I knew this, and you know this, so I keep saying the law of attraction, but I don't need, I don't need that, I knew it already as a kid. We attract what we are, what we put out, we attract. That doesn't mean that what happened to me was right. The way my dad treated me was, was wrong. It was definitely wrong. It's wrong by God. I checked with God. It's definitely wrong what he did. But we can't solve violence with violence. We can't solve bullying with bullying. So I kept going through living in fear for many years. I just want to mention this. This is from a place of truth. I sense that everyone, everyone's scared, believe me, I'm not the only one who is frightened. Everyone's frightened. But it's a question of how do we manage our fear? Are we frightened out of love? Are we frightened into being violent? Because that's what would happen to me. I was a nice guy, I was calm. People did, people actually did like me and that scared me as well. Because I said to you, I was scared of love. I was scared of people loving me because my dad took it away from me. So I didn't trust my mum's love. I didn't, a son not trusting his mother's love. That's very, very, uh, that's, that's, that's interesting I think. So that's why I started around people. That's why in, in almost every family gathering at Christmas, I was nervous inside. I was shaking. I was in my head. I was thinking, what shall I say next? They said that. How do I respond to that? They said, how was your day? How do you respond to a question like that? Should I say my day is good? Should I say my day's pretty fucked up? I want to kill myself. <laughs> Sorry, my language. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to say that? I can't say that. It's inappropriate. So I've got to play the game. I say, yeah, my day is great, but inside I want to kill myself. Because that's what it does to you when you're abused when you're younger. And you don't trust anyone. You don't trust love. It makes you want to kill yourself. And then you get voices in your head saying, oh, don't be such a mummy's boy. Because that's the thing my dad said to me. Don't say that. Don't seek sympathy. You say, trap me in every corner. If I'm violent and I hurt people, I get respect, it's not real respect really, they don't trust me, but I get some respect from other violent men, who I love actually, and I really mean that from my heart. I get respect from them, but they don't really trust me and I don't trust them. So I'm, I'm constantly in this relationship of distrust, because violence is distrust. Love is absolute, it's trust. Loving God, loving ourself, love of our family. Well, I had to do a lot of study, I had to do a lot of questioning, I had to go through, I had to get around a lot of amazing people, I had to also be a teacher myself to realise that love is the most powerful thing in the world. There is absolutely no mummy's boy in love. There is no, there's nothing soft about love. So people think I've gone soft or I'm soft. I've been through all, I've done all those things and it was because I was soft. It's because I couldn't surrender to love, I couldn't, I couldn't tell the truth and I couldn't be who I really wanted to be because I was frightened of my dad um, abandoning me. So even though I try to rationalise, well, why would I care if my dad abandoned me? Because I've had sex with loads of women. Women like me. 
I've got lots of friends. I can make as many male friends as I want. When I started to slowly start to improve, I make money. The money doesn't mean fuck all. The, sorry my language. The money doesn't mean fuck all. The sex of women doesn't mean anything. The friendships, the validation, it means nothing if you don't love yourself. It means absolutely nothing. This is my truth and my experience. This is coming from someone that was, I had no money, job seekers allowance, and I started to make money. Because there's no trust in dishonesty. It's a sign it's raining. So, how I overcome my social anxiety was surrendering to this through a collection of experiences and it was the honesty that gave me confidence and I knew that when I was a kid because it's so simple, it, honesty is the best policy. So when I started to be honest, the fear started to go out and the love started to come back in and it was a weird feeling because it, it felt, for many years I felt unloved and I felt dirty and unclean and unlovable. I learned these manipulative behaviours to attract other people that are also manipulative which is obviously was my fault, my responsibility out of fear and, and conditioning and the rest of it. And I got to a stage where I, I just can't do this no more, can't play this game no more. I'm willing, to, I'm willing to die for the truth. So what is the truth? The truth is I'm not myself. The truth is I'm not an honest person. The truth is I'm attracting all this in my life and I don't want it anymore. So I'm going to stop cheating and I stop cheating. I'm going to stop uh, seeking for approval. Uh, we all want approval, but I'm going to get natural approval. I'm not trying to please anyone. I'm going to stop being violent. I had to stop the violence. I have to stop smashing men up and I have to stop getting angry and lashing out at women if I feel I can't control a woman. Because I did that a few times. I have to admit and condone to that. I slapped a few women a few times because I thought they were trying to disrespect me and trying to cheat me and I couldn't control them. That's what violent, insecure men did and that's who I was at the time. I'm no longer. So I got the violence out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing now because I get a bit uncomfortable. It's very honest. <laughs> got the violence out, found out who I was. Found out I'm a pretty normal guy and I don't need to cheat and steal and I don't need to be violent to get love because every bit of love I need is in myself. And of course, we've heard it before, it's in everyone. The most difficult part, I don't even know if it was difficult, it was just an illusion, it felt difficult, now it feels was to tell the truth, do what I did now. So honesty overcomes social anxiety. Then I realised, what if I get confident and I re-establish my relationship myself? My dad might get jealous, he might be threatened by me, because when I was younger, he got, he was fret when I was younger and I was in a place of love, and I'd never read a book in my life, I, I didn't even know what personal development was, I didn't even know what, congr I didn't know any of this stuff, it just, it's just how I was born, it's how God made us, or how, whatever we call universe. I knew this, I was myself, I loved myself. So I just had to re-establish that, I had to go and face my dad and just tell him and give back all of his shame and forgive him. And forgiving him was easy because I naturally forgave him when I forgave myself. And I had to break that illusion and spell that if I'm myself he's going to attack me. But he couldn't attack me as I got older because, well, I'm stronger than him. But I'm not going to hit my own dad because I don't use violence. I love the guy and I've forgiven him. So it's another clearing video uh, for me. And then my whole life changed. And then I became um, socially confident. And it was through honesty. And then I went into every area of my life and I still continue to do that. And I just see areas, and I'm just using a term. Because sometimes, maybe this is a graphic thing, but when we're dishonest, it's violent. Because it has a violent effect on us. It doesn't make us feel good, it makes us angry. So I worked on this stuff. So I'm socially confident and I'm healed and I'm free of social anxiety. But I certainly am not perfect, but we don't need to be perfect. We don't need to be perfect in love because um, we don't need to be. We're human, we're always learning. So love is, uh, love is very...